Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Construct 2 tutorial. I thought it's about time that I did another one for you guys. However, I'm going to disappoint some people because it's not going to be a full-on project like the last Super Mario Bros series. What I'd really like to focus on is just simple gameplay mechanics that people are going to be able to apply to many different projects. Like, this one is purely focusing on gun fire rates, so if you want a slow gun, a fast gun, or something in between, this video is going to show you how. And it's going to be generic enough that if you're doing a top-down shooter or you're doing a platformer, you're going to be able to implement that across different types of projects. The other thing too is most of the assets that I'm going to utilize in these videos, guys, are actually made by Skira. Now, one of the things I'm going to do in these videos is link the original assets library to you from the Skira website but I'm also going to package up the ones I use in the video. So the first thing is, there's a link in the description of this video. It's going to give you this firerate.zip file if you go and download that right now. And it contains three files. It's got a bullet picture, an explode picture, and a player picture. And if you've ever looked at any of the tutorials or any of the built-in um, templates, that's the word, you're going to recognize these pictures straight away. So you're not going to need these pictures after we've created our project, so I'm just going to copy these files. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to copy them outside the zip file, and I'm just going to work with them here. Once I'm done with this project, I'm going to delete those files, okay, because they're going to be included within the project itself. So let's go and create a project right now in Construct 2. Hit the File button, hit New. Let's go New Empty Project, Open. And the first thing I like to do, because this is only just a little mechanics demonstration, we don't need this huge landscape, we don't need all the empty space. So I'm just going to quickly take the window size value, so I'm going to click here and copy that. I'm going to click on layer 1, I'm going to click on the layout size, and I'm going to paste it over the top. That way I've just got a single window I'm working with, we're not moving around or anything. Okay, the next thing is to really create those objects that we're going to need for the rest of the game. So we need basically four objects. The first one's going to be the mouse. So let's do that now. All of my objects, guys, I'm pretty much going to insert through double-clicking. So I'm going to double-click on the layout. I'm going to find the mouse object, and I'm going to insert that. The thing is making the character. So let's double-click, make ourselves a sprite, call it player, and click insert, and just click anywhere in the middle to create your player. I'm just going to add this sprite through using the open file up here, or open image I should say. Now it's already loaded up in the same folder because I was doing this before, just as a test. This is the picture that you want, the player.png. So I'm going to open that. I'm not going to edit this image in any way, shape or form, including the collision model. I'm not going to touch that. What I am going to do though is I'm going to include another image point for this guy. So make sure you've got your image point panel open. We're going to add a new one, and we're going to call this one gun. And we're going to place this image point right on top of his gun. Because otherwise, if we just had the origin point without the gun origin point, or image point I should say, we would be shooting bullets out of our head. Now we can shoot them out of our gun. Okay, it's as simple as that. So before we make our next sprite, let's set this guy up. He's got a few behaviors that I want to add. So let's go behaviors. Let's add them. First thing is he's moving around. So this is a top down. So I'm going to add the eight direction behavior. The next thing is the bound to layout behavior, so he can't walk outside the level because I don't want him to do that. And we're ready to move on to the next object, which is going to be the bullet. So let's double click, sprite, bullet. Click it down the bottom somewhere, somewhere outside the layout, because we don't want the bullet starting on the level. Load an image, bullet, don't need to change anything else, let's close it. Let's only add one behavior to this guy, and no prizes for guessing what behavior it is. It's bullet. Okay. And then we're going to set up our last object, which is going to be the explosion from the tutorial as well. So, sprite explosion. I'm going to add it outside again, because I don't want it on the level when it starts up. Open the picture, explode. Now, I know that it's got all the black background. We're going to deal with that right now. Close this. We're going to add a behavior before we do that. Add, and it's going to be fade. All right. Now, do, 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 do. Those settings look pretty good. So what that's going to mean is when the bullet... So, sorry. Let me start that again. When the explosion is created, it's going to fade out in one second and then destroy itself. So we don't have to do any timers, any worrying about it dissipating. The second thing we're going to change about the explosion is the effects. Instead of a, a normal blend mode, I just want to change it to additive. And you can see straight away that's made a big difference about the colors there. Okay, it's gotten rid of the black. 
and it's gotten rid of all like the dark colors in the explosion and it's made it look pretty good so pretty much at the point now if i run this project and grab my project i'm going to be able to move around using the arrow keys and that's purely because of the eight direction so we need a few things in this project so let's just do some of the background programming first before we get into the gunplay so I just want the character to keep looking at the mouse while they're aiming around. And that's a really easy thing to do. So before I add any code, I like to add separate event sheets. So I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to call this one player. And the second thing we need to do is add the player event sheet inside event sheet 1. Because if you haven't watched any of my videos or you've never really done much construct, one layer can only have one event sheet. So we need to, this is the active event sheet when layout one occurs. So you need to include the player event sheet for this code to occur. All right. Now this code's pretty simple, guys. We're just going to add an every tick event. So system every tick, which is always. We're going to set the player's angle. So player set angle towards position. And the X and the Y, what's the X and what's the Y position we want to look at? Well, it's the mouse. So let's type in mouse.x, mouse.y. Simple as that. Type those in, hit the done button, and this should be enough to have our player follow the mouse cursor. Get back over here. And that's it, guys. And we can still move around, and he's still going to look at the mouse cursor. Okay, let's go back here. So the next thing is to get the gun shooting working, okay? So we basically want to, when the left mouse button is clicked, we spawn a bullet, you set the angle of that bullet to the right direction, and then the bullet behavior is going to take over and send that bullet flying, okay? And that is as simple as that. So I'm just going to quickly add an event. We're going to go mouse, do 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 on click. Make sure it's left clicked, okay? And then let's go bullet... Whoop, actually, no, sorry, player. Spawn. And what do we want to spawn? Well, we want to spawn a bullet. What layer? We've only got one layer, so I'm going to leave it at zero. The image point we want to spawn on is gun. That's the one that we made on the player. Go done. And now we should be able to shoot some bullets. Do, 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 do. Now, you can see the problem already. I haven't introduced any fire rates at the moment. So if I spam this, I can shoot as quick as I want. If I just click it once, it's going to go slow, but... If we go pretty fast. Now, so what we really need to do is introduce like a cooldown, okay? So if you've ever played MMOs where you use a spell or a move and you get that cooldown before you can move it, use it again, that's basically what we're implementing here when it comes to shooting bullets. Before we can do this, we need to add a couple of variables to our player here, okay? So I'm going to add some instance variables to this guy. Now, the reason I'm using instance variables instead of global variables is if you wanted to use this on enemies, you could use it as an instance variable and every enemy would have their own set of fire rates so one enemy could shoot faster than another and so forth now I know we've only got one player but I'm keeping it generic as I said first one is going to be called fire rate this is how fast we can shoot okay the lower the number the quicker we're going to be able to shoot so I'm going to go 0 0.75 so that's literally going to be three quarters of a second now add another one and the f this one's going to be called fire cool now coal down apparently and we're going to start at zero now what's going to happen effectively this is going to be like a counter of sorts when you shoot a bullet fire cooldown is going to be upped to the value of fire rate so it's going to be increased from zero all the way up to the fire rate and then fire cooldown is slowly going to reduce down back to zero as the game progresses when we hit zero or if we go below zero just in case we can shoot another bullet so while fire cooldown is greater than zero, we are not allowed to shoot any more bullets. Okay? And that's how these two guys are going to work. So let's go back to our code, and let's implement just that fire cooldown for the moment. We don't want to be able to shoot if fire cooldown is bigger than zero. So the first thing we're going to do is quickly set its value. So after we shoot a bullet, set fire cooldown to the fire rate. Okay, so player set value. We want to set fire cooldown to the fire rate. There's a quick way of doing this, guys. Self is a shortcut to the player. You can see it's got the little player icon too. I'll just do that again. See how it's got the little player icon? Whatever object you are currently performing the action on is self. 
Yeah, it's a good idea if you do that, just in case you are doing it for enemies. So fire rate. So set the value of cooldown to the fire rate. Okay, that's just going to change the value of cooldown. We're not actually using it yet. I want to add a second condition right here. So let's right click, add another condition, and let's go to the player. Let's compare the instance variable of cooldown and make sure that it's less than or equal to zero. So what we're doing here is we're checking if we are allowed to shoot. Okay, so if they click the left button, we're allowed to shoot, create a bullet and make it so we're not allowed to shoot. Okay, now there's a lot of bugs in this and we haven't done everything we need to do just yet because I'm going to shoot one bullet and then I'm never going to be able to shoot again. So that's pretty harsh. So the next step is if fire cool cooldown goes above zero, so something bigger than zero, we need to subtract from it. Now, the question really from a lot of people would be what do you subtract? Okay, we'll look at that in a second. Let's have a look at actually just checking if fire cooldown is greater than zero first. And we're going to do it underneath every tick. So I'm going to add a sub event to this guy. I like to right click here on the left little tab, add sub event. You can also press S on the keyboard if you've done my tutorials before, you'd know it. Let's go to player, compare instance variable. If the cooldown is greater than zero, then we need to subtract from it. So let's go into player, subtract, which would just be there, subtract from cooldown. Now the question was, how much do we subtract? If you subtract one, these guys are going to be able to shoot all the time. Okay, you want to subtract what's called DT, which stands for delta time. Now delta time tells us how long it's been since the last time we checked this. Okay, that might sound like a very awkward explanation. But let's say for example, fire cooldown gets set to 0 0.75. Okay, then all of a sudden this happens. Okay. Now DT will be the last time every tick occur, the difference, sorry, in time between the last time every tick occurred. So it's going to be an incredibly small value, okay? But what it does is it keeps your computer in time. It doesn't matter if you've got an incredibly fast computer or an incredibly slow computer. It's actually going to keep every computer in sync, okay? So whenever you have something to do with time, okay, you're best off using DT. And fire cooldown for us definitely has something to do with time. So let's just try this. Let's press play. We should be able to shoot more than once now. You can see I'm spamming it and it's only shooting. There you go. Almost every second. So there's only one thing I'd like to change right now and then I'm going to bring in the explosions in just a moment. I don't like this left click. I don't like the idea of having to spam the left click button to be able to shoot. I like the idea of holding the left mouse button to keep shooting. So I'm going to change this event now guys. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to go back, I'm going to check if mouse button is down from now on, and just check if left is down. So it's not going to spam out hundreds of bullets because we've got the cooldown in place now. So let's hold the button, and you can see what's going on there now. Now the last thing I want to do is when the bullet hits the edges or goes just outside the layout, we're going to explode it and destroy the bullet. So we don't have 500,000 bullets on our event, on our, sorry, on our game, which is just going to slow it down. So add an event, let's go bullet, type in outside, you've got this condition here, is it outside layout, I am going to get the bullet to spawn an explosion, spawn explosion, okay, zero, zero is fine for those two, and then I'm going to destroy the bullet, can't spell apparently, okay, with that done, I'm going to hit play, Refresh, where's my explosions? I should be able to at least see them on the edges. Nope, apparently I can't. It's not that it's not working, it's actually creating explosions, but this white background is actually covering up the explosion. If I move that over there, you can see I can't even see that explosion. So I'm just going to change the background layer's color. So just click on layer zero, I'm going to change it to blue. I don't know why, I just can. Now when I shoot, you can see lovely little explosions.
All right, so I'm going to leave you guys with this code sitting in front of me. I'm going to thank you for watching this video, and in the next video, I'm going to introduce different weapon types, okay? So we're going to step it up another level, and I'm going to introduce pistols and shotguns and rocket launchers, okay? And I'm going to show you how you can use family objects to create that with very little coding. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. Please like, subscribe, comment down the bottom. You know where they are. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.